We're here in Rapido's factory. We're actually going to be looking at the electrical system as a whole, as one whole unit, one whole ecosystem. We're also going to be answering some questions from our patrons. So a lot of people are asking what would happen if we get struck by lightning. This episode is going to be very exciting. Currently based in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, we're overseeing one of the most critical parts of our boat build, her electrical installation. In this episode, we're covering every aspect of our worst nightmare. From a full tour of our electrical layout, to speaking with world-class experts in the field of electrical engineering, to talking to those who have actually been struck by lightning whilst at sea. I got an electric shock through my iPad. just dead after that sail trip. Yesterday was a nightmare getting here. Oh my God. Darwin was projectile spewing. Darwin spewed on you, me, and Melly. It was a nightmare, like I'm traumatized. At an airport, car ride, and on the plane. <laughs> there was a lot of vomit. But I'm really excited to see our boat. I'm gonna be hiding behind the camera most of today. Dead. Leak, isn't it? This 40 here is actually going to New York. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Ship a boat to New York. But not everyone can sail it that far or they just don't want to deal with it. It costs a lot, like $60,000 or something. Before we jump into the electrics and learn more about lightning strikes versus boats, Riley and I need to get an update from Mark as to how our floating home is progressing since the last time we stopped by. I feel bad, it's lunchtime and everyone's sleeping like on and around the boat. I said to Riley to wait, but it's the quietest time right now. No one's using a grinder so you guys can hear us. Finishing touches here on the mount for the tender, which has been my plan to have at the back here for ages now. That's been finalized down here. It looks so nice. It's, I thought there was gonna be like sharp bits, but it's all like rounded and nice. And with the cork flooring back here, it, that's gonna look great. Now we're cleaning up all the interior to get to start dividing it all off so we can get it, you know, start actually fitting out the areas properly. Yep. I uh, setting up lights and fan, we're making it clean and then, you know, making it there's no more dust in there and the first one was down the back there the second thing is compartmentalizing the boat cleaning it up and getting it ready for furniture fit out oh my goodness the whole saloon seating is ripped out wow the room looks so much bigger without that there's no light down here but... Look at this. Yeah, so we're just putting all the furniture in, dry fitting everything, getting a full picture of the end result. So then we can go right, right out, what do we paint this on? What do we do with this door? We've got the floor to do, so we've got we're making our job list up now. This is really exciting. Like the room has totally come together since I was last here. I'm now able to open up the wardrobe. I can figure out which one is bigger. Little shelves. We're gonna have some little lamps coming up here. This is a bonus one. It's all coming together and starting to look like this is one of my favourite parts of the boat. Mark and I have been going around and around. It's not easy to install and that's why most manufacturers just won't do it. And this is now standard on all Rapido boats. It looks like we want to introduce it to all the boats. When we're on the 50 and the 40, the circulation, the airflow is just so important. And having these two window or hatches opening up on the saloon roof here is really good and with them and with these forward opening windows here i won't say it's like an air conditioner but the air cools down on the water and when it comes through the boat so unbelievably important to get that air flowing and that's why i'm so excited about these you really do just have to be so careful walking around this boat factory and on the boat there's just holes everywhere you can understand why we don't want to bring the kids in here every day not the environment for our babies Having been on the 40 and then the 50 and then back here, I just, I realise now how big this is. It's like massive. I would take the accommodation of the 50 and just keep it at that, because that's fine for myself and Elena and the two kids and two crew. I would stretch it out. I would make the performance, you know, 10%, 15% more. Uh, I'm going to love the 60 foot of waterline length. I would never get rid of that. In the guest cabin, again, just really starting to look like a room. So much room in here. The bed is huge. Nice little walkway area where you can access the head and the wardrobes over here. Ah, I can't believe this is going to be our home. 
with all this said, it's time to get down to brass tacks about the electrics on board. You're caffeinated up. I am. Oh, hello. Just having my daily dose of AG1. Elena keeps reminding me to have it after my gut health was obliterated from the antibiotics that I was having. After my recent encounter with what we're calling my prime mates. AG1 has made it super simple to get everything that you need in, in the day, which is good for me as a sailor. I can just shovel it in and I know that I'm probably, I'm mostly healthy. AG1 supports gut health, immunity, and energy levels. It has pre and probiotics, adaptogens, antigens, and whole food sourced ingredients. You just mix one or two scoops in with your bottle like this and it legitimately tastes delicious. Really and truly, it's amazing. As is generally the case, if you would like to try Athletic Greens, they've got an offer on for you right now. Five travel packs for free, as well as a year's supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 with your first purchase. So you can use our link. It helps us out if you guys get it through us. So the link is in the description below. Thanks so much to AG1 for sponsoring this video. It's a major reason as to why we can keep making videos. Cheers guys. Introducing our electric guru, Dylan. Hey, g'day, how are you going? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna give him 15 or 10 seconds? I think 15 seconds. 15 seconds per major electrical component on the boat. Come on, mate. Yep. Down in the engine room at the moment. This is where the, the powerhouse of the equipment is. So over here, we're going to have uh, 46 kilowatts of lithium ion batteries. That's the main battery storage for the boat. And all the power that is generated is going to be put into those batteries. And then it's basically going to flow downhill from the 48 volt. That'll power everything from the electric propulsion engine to the fridges and freezers to the mast head light. Coming to this side of the engine room, which is the starboard side, we're going to have a panel which is dropped down on the space, and we're going to have all the main DC distribution mounted on that panel. And on this panel, we're going to manage it through our battery safety contactors, through our fuse blocks, and also have um, distribution off through our 24 hour circuits. So, are we all playing musical chairs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's over this side? So, this is the fourth side of the engine room. Um, in the middle we've got the engine, so the engine's going to provide a uh, recharge back to the battery bank through the alternator system. Uh, up on the air will be some starter batteries, so the engine has a redundant starter system. It'll have two start batteries, so if one is ever flat, you can restart the engine and get, get charged back into the battery. Yeah, so once we come out of the engine room, we come up here to the port side of the boat and behind the seat is going to be a main switchboard. The switchboard is basically on all the time. It's just for circuits that need to remain in standby. And then from this area up to the nav table and then the nav table will be a day panel. So everything Riley and Elena wants to turn on and off during the day will be up, up there easy to get to on the nav station. It cannot be overstated how much time I'm going to spend right here. So this needs to be a comfy cushion, and then I've got all of my nav stuff right here. Next, we go aft from, yeah. from the 48 volt distribution, and we come back to the back of the boat where we've got 48 volt distributed to the ocean bowl. So okay. that's down here, down the back. In this very nice pink uh, bar. <laughs> down the bottom there's an ocean bolt motor and then we bring also 48 volts up to the base of the helm pedestal and from there it's going to split out to the Harkin winches which are on the deck. By the way do you guys like the new pink for the guest head? I'm just kidding we're not painting <laughs> the bathroom pink this is a primer or something and it stinks. So as we come back we also go from the base of the pedestal out to the cockpit winches so we've got two large winches in the side of the cockpit here and here and then up on the coach roof there's two two winches at the helm and then down the back there's also a flat winder to drive the traveler from the helm and so down the back here on both sides of the boat there's a solar panel arch so that will come out the back and each side will have about 420 watts of solar uh, on the main panels and then underneath there will be basically a storage box that when you lift up the panel you can pull out an additional flexible solar system should I come out of the hatch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> so up the front here, we've got 48 volt anchor windlass and also a 48 volt bow thruster. So the boat will have plenty of power for anchoring and also maneuvering in tight spots because she's pretty wide. Hey, up 
here we have what's going to be the carbon rotating mast which does cause a few problems because as you can imagine a few problems because when the mast is not centered the true wind angle is not going to be right and neither is the radar so we've got a sensor down here that offsets that and makes sure it's all good. So at the helm we have a autopilot control for the BNG pilot. There's a BNG H5000 graphic display and a BNG Zeus 3 sharp plotter. You've got your engine control for the Yanmar, side power thruster control, the engine throttle for the Yanmar and ocean bolt display for the ocean bolt system. Underneath the boat here we're going to have three sensors, there's going to be a depth sounder, a speed log which will give you speed through the water and then also a forward facing sonar which is going to look for obstacles when uh, the boat's coming into shallow water so it avoids bombies or rocks or anything that maybe is not on the chart. After such an evocative performance of virtuosic artistry I feel it remiss of me to have not defined an important term in today's discourse. That being lightning. Lightning is a naturally occurring electrostatic discharge during which two electrically charged regions temporarily neutralize themselves. This causes an instantaneous release of on average one gigajoule. One gigajoule of electricity could make 1,000 pots of coffee and is the equivalent of one million British thermal units. So you've learned about our electrical setup and a tiny bit about lightning. Now it's time for us to talk to Colin, whose boat has been struck not once, but twice. <laughs> We've got Colin here from Parlay Revival. Ma mate, thank you so much for joining us. No worries, mate. Go check out his YouTube channel as well, everyone. So you've been struck by lightning twice, mate. That's really, really unlucky. <laughs> You'd have to say. What were the conditions like for both of them? The two times for us were quite different. The first time we were all on the boat, and the second time, no one was on the boat because I was off filming a show, so... So tell me what happened when everyone was on the boat because that's everyone's worst nightmare, right? Yeah, so there was... It wasn't that stormy, but there was definitely some lightning around. Nothing out of the ordinary. I was down in my cabin. I was watching something on my iPad and it was plugged in charging. And I heard this, like, crack. And I got an electric shock through my iPad. And I just dropped the iPad. The oh. iPad was right. This guy that was helping me with videos at the time, he said, it wasn't us, it wasn't us. And I said, I'm pretty sure it was us, I just got shot. He was adamant it wasn't us. I felt like it was us, so I went outside and I looked up and the top of the mast was smoking. The VHN ante antenna was just, had disappeared. It was gone. It wasn't on the deck or anything, it was just gone. Jesus. So in that situation, what, what can you recommend people do? Because you would have gone through this now. So I know you immediately, you run and check the through holes and make sure you're not sinking. Yeah, that's that's first and foremost. Obviously make sure everyone's okay, but after that... Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Just protect the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone's looking like I am right now, then uh, you should probably <laughs> call an ambulance. Well, you lose all your electronics pretty much every time. We lost all of our navigation equipment. But as long as through hulls or, you know, the anodes, all the grounding points aren't um, damaged to the point where the fiberglass has is, is been compromised. Everyone's safe and it's just a matter of just going through the motions. We're pros at it now. Yeah, I bet you are though, jeez. If you were offshore, presumably you'd be packing a sextant these days? <laughs> yeah, hopefully the lightning doesn't take the compass out, but that first time we got struck, we are on the Pacific side of Panama to do all the repairs because we had some bulkhead things come up as well. We decided to go through the Panama Canal, so we navigated through the canal and everything, all of that just using Navionics on our phones. But the conclusion that I've come to, right, is that most of it is bad luck and there's not... I haven't really found a, a tried and proven deterrent for lightning yet. There's a couple of companies that I'm sort of interested in speaking with, but I... You know, if, if a million volts is going to come after you, it's, it's going to hit you and you're just this rod in the, in the middle of the ocean just attracting it. Did insurance cover you, mate? So we don't actually have insurance. Um, I'm having insurance. <laughs> 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 I've been having a bit of trouble trying to get insurance. I've been struck by lightning twice now and it's a hurricane damaged boat and we had this major bulkhead issue. 
So apparently we're uh, a high risk uh, for insurance. Yeah. He's Thank like you. sweating. The yeah, bath is so I'm gonna, hot. I'm gonna have to <laughs> before I pass out. You look worse than I do. We should have checked the temp. Yeah, man. All right, cheers, guys. Have a good uh, Patreon live. Thank that, you. Thanks, mate. Yeah, cheers. Take it easy. So you, you can see behind me here. This is one of the ammers. This line here is where the bottom paint is going to go. That part of the boat will be underwater and that won't be. And you can just see how both ammers just touched the water. You can imagine if the ammers were sitting up in the air like this, that the boat would be slapping around on anchor like that. I'll be back soon, babe. Bread. Yeah. Oh, bread. <laughs> You're gonna give me shit about my smelly tits. You actually don't stink. I do. <laughs> no, babe. Not. You guys, this is really exciting. I've just seen the colours for the first time. I'm trying to find a Hague blue. Mark, can you please show the two failures from the past? We have the, the first rejected colour, and then we have the second colour we tried to look at. It's also rejected. <laughs> now so, we have a third, yeah. and it's looking like a winner. I'm so excited. I really hope that Riley doesn't screw up his face. We're about to see him. Just quickly, Riley, we just got our new Hague blue colour in, and I'm so nervous to see if you like it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, do we have it? Do you like it? Yes, I love it. I don't think it's quite what I had in mind, but I, I really like it. It's sort of fun. So I just had to measure the space behind the kitchen sink, what's called the splashback. And we're actually having like a really thin copper splashback made up for us. And I just pulled out the tape measure after measuring it in the galley. And I couldn't believe it. Like it's, it's 116 inches. That's how long the splashback's gonna be. No way. Yeah. Is this wrong, Dylan? <laughs> That's how long it would be. So, yeah. Holy crap. Caroline has asked me to go check to see everything that has arrived. So we need to actually go see what's here, what's missing, if we have to reorder something, hopefully not. Looking at the stuff in these boxes just made me suddenly like super nostalgic. Letty's old toys, his little Mr. Men book. We actually really had to find, I sent our kids baby books like their medical records in the mail and of course I needed them. Mission accomplished, we found what we needed. I'm so glad nothing is mouldy. We've just looked at a bunch of clothes and it's all clean. And this is exciting, it's like Christmas. Presents! <laughs> oh, it's the pink velvet duvet cover. Oh, oh sick. sick! Feels pretty light to me. Not gonna... Half of them make it on. Obviously, there's no glass in there's those. There's no glass, no, and they're pretty light. It's beautiful. The colours are perfect. I don't know what these are for. The potato sack. <gasps> Looks like most of the clothes you wear. It's a potato sack with more potato sack inside it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is just a cushion. <laughs> but we did actually also get potato sacks to put plants in, like oh, on great. the wall. Which will match the potato sack cushion. We have a battery operated fairy lights for the ambiance. We've got plugged in fairy lights. No, that's an LED, right? Yeah. That'll really brighten the room. These are more just for, for the feels, babe. Oh my God, we're gonna be lit up like a kiss concert. <laughs> Pipes. These are the driftwood handles for the both the heads. These are nice. Super, super light. Oh yeah. 
That's a great addition. This is for the guest bedroom. This is the picnic folk set. I'm so excited about this. I followed them on Instagram for ages. <laughs> Look, how beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. It's a lie. And these are like proper vintage plates. You like them? Uh, It'll probably fit the boat. This fit is the boat. wicked. I love these. spinning the heck out so beautiful like they just make me want to cry even these trees they're giant around for an apple <laughs> so i'm convinced that the elephant wants the kids apples because it just followed us from that side to here uh, elena has made eye contact and now she thinks that she's friends with the elephant. i'm friends <laughs> and tell me is that a sign that an elephant's hungry like it just opened its mouth Pooey, you guys stink. I do like them. They're very cute, but they stink. Do you like them? That's a sheep. Probably. There's a goat that's out. Put him back in. <laughs> I think I was supposed to do that. Yeah, it was out. There's no other goats out. And that was a baby. He's so small, he just fit under the fence. Now for the fun part. We have got some questions from our patrons. This is a little post that we did on. Oh, now some of these are gonna be so technical that we can't answer them. We're gonna call up Dylan. He'll be able to tell us. Is there anything built in to handle lightning strikes? Dylan Johnson. The thing about lightning strikes is you don't know how badly it's going to affect your boat. It could, there could be a huge fire. Next minute everything's melting. There could be a casualty. Like you just, you don't know with lightning. Everyone could die. Everyone the boat could die. could just completely disintegrate. The things that I have to protect us against lightning strikes, a rabbit's foot and a four-leaf <laughs> clover. You were gonna go. <laughs> so I, I take them Great. on every sail. Yeah, you just stay away from angry looking clouds. All the energy that's coming from the cloud down to the boat wants to find its way to ground. So if you're on anchor, it might go down your anchor chain. It's gonna go down your mast, down your rigging. You'll have an effect on, on the system, but you should be able to continue to start the engine, hopefully. And there is other lightning protection available. You know, you can get inline surge protectors and lightning prevention measures. Some of them are proven up above others, but they do get very costly and it's it's basically like an insurance policy do you want to spend the extra money or do you want to take the risk and whether or not they work you know that nobody can really guarantee that if you stay away from anything electrical and just don't touch it while the lightning's going on then hopefully you're isolated so this one's from michael kochi biggest areas of risk in regards to the system and what are the fail safes biggest area of risk would be fire fail safes are in the rapido there's a fire suppression system in the engine room another thing would be obviously water you've got a lot of sensitive equipment in a boat so if there's any sort of flooding or humidity or you know leaks or anything like that that's that's probably your biggest risk we've designed the system with redundancies so almost any single point of failure there's some sort of workaround so from that point of view hopefully if anything does go wrong you can get out of that situation really easily oh this one's a fun one from celine you mentioned that ocean vault could get into your system is there any safety precautions against it getting hacked this is so funny i wasn't there for the electrical install and when i saw the footage and riley was saying oh helsinki is like logged in and they can test the water and if I'm tired they can drive my boat home for me and it really got me thinking like how much can they actually access like can we trust Ocean Vault do they have a listening device I don't know if they can listen to your conversations but they could probably you know determine how fast you're going and where you're going if somebody can see the data through a computer and your computer's connected to the internet there's no reason why they couldn't have a look and see where you're going i guess but they'll, they'll have certain protections in, in their softwares that stop this from happening i'm sure thank you that's great and thanks for the beautiful jellyfish background yeah, yeah that's so cool. and i just i wanted to say that personally i'm like super proud to 
have been here for this stage of the boat build because we wouldn't have learned this stuff otherwise. I've been like trying super hard to pay attention because electronics, like I'm not, I'm not interested in that naturally. But I'm like, come on, Alaya, you can do this. I know I'm terrible at it. It's a big, it's a big <laughs> area of unknown for me. And I like really enjoyed actually absorbing what Dylan was saying. And like, I it feels so nice to know where everything is in the boat. And I mean, there's still millions of things I don't know, but um, yeah, I think it's the it. it's the effort that counts. So yeah, go us. <laughs> <laughs> Go me! <laughs> Can I get comments below? Yeah, Elena. <laughs> no, don't. We here at Vagabond Industries hope that you don't get struck. I guess there's probably more to learn, so if, if anyone wants to know anything, please jump in the comments and drop your questions there. I'll do a link to the video where we really nearly did get struck by lightning and it landed right next to us and it was just insane. The road is long and full of dust the landscape changes around me, on and on I feel I must. <laughs>